you know, global climate models, especially among climate skeptics, get a bad reputation. But I just want to make the point that these are, these are just based on physical equations. So if, if you ask me how much warming we expect by, by 2100, and I say four degrees Celsius, and you say, how did you get that number? And I say, well, math and physics. I just, I looked at an equation and I calculated it. I think people are like, oh, okay, that sounds good. But if I say I, I got it from a climate model, people say, oh, well, climate model. I mean, that's, that, could, that could give you any answer you want. But they are nothing but math and physics. Yeah, I exactly. It's the same thing. It's, so it's, and it's, it's, you know, climate models run the gamut from being very simple. It could be a single equation that's just based on the first law of thermodynamics, or it could be millions of lines of code, which are trying to simulate much more of the Earth system. Um, but they're physical models, they're based on physics, they're based on conservation of mass, conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. They're not statistical extrapolations like some models are. Um, and I'm not pointing the finger at e economics. Well, I was, I was feeling a little uncomfortable. With <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, when, when things are based on physical equations, I got you know, we have more confidence in them than so let's statistics. talk a little bit about the impact of this uh, temperature uh, change for both uh, natural and uh, human systems. What, what, uh, what do you have to say about that? So this is where things definitely get more uncertain because we're moving into kind of unprecedented territory. We don't have analogs to this in the past. Um, again, because our most recent change in terms of magnitude was about 10 times slower. And so when you look at that, you don't really know how much of that change is analogous to what we would expect uh, over the next 100 years. Uh, but what we do see is, for example, if you look at terrestrial ecosystems, um, we see large changes in what ecosystems look like between the last ice age and the present Holocene time period, which again was about five degrees Celsius change. And so if you then, you know, impose that same amount of change going into the future, but 10 times faster, there is a huge concern that you would have major uh, extinction events. And the, and the reason is, is because ecosystems can't move fast enough, can't adapt fast enough uh, to keep up with that. So one way to think about the change instead of absolute temperature is you could think of uh, distance travel to stay in the same climate. So, you know, if you think about like going from Boston to New York, that's about like three degrees Fahrenheit difference. So a couple hundred miles or something. Yeah. Um, now, if you if you look at the the amount of distance that you'd have to travel to stay in the same climate uh, in the United States uh, over this century, it's about 500 miles, and so that amounts to about 75 feet a day. And so animals can move 75 feet a day, but trees can't move 75 feet a day. And and we know just from uh, you know, from driving across different climates that, that changes in temperature uh, by about, so we're talking about like 10 degrees Fahrenheit uh, over a lot of land surfaces in terms of 2100 under a business as usual scenario. And so that's moving 500 miles. And we know that, that the environment changes quite a bit by driving, you know, 500 miles. And so you're basically imposing that level of change uh, over 100 years and so there's major concerns that, uh, that ecosystems would not be able to keep up with that. Um, some of the most sensitive systems would be like coral reefs. Um, corals tend to be extremely sensitive to temperature. Um, and then there's, I'm not, I'm not an ecologist, but I'm sure that an ecologist could, could point out uh, other particularly vulnerable uh, ecosystems. But I think that we don't know, you know exactly which uh, ecosystems will be robust and which won't. Uh, have because we, such have we been observing uh, in real time any of those kinds of changes beginning to take place? Yeah, it's hard to disentangle because humans are affecting the environment in so many other ways as well. I mean, we're constantly, um, you know, changing the land surface. And so if you look, for example, in the Amazon, we're you know cutting down a lot of the Amazon and putting in 
uh, pasture and, yeah. and uh, area for food and things like that. And so if you observe some change in, uh, you know, the population of an animal, it's hard to tell if that's because of what you've done physically changing the environment there, or if it has something to do with temperature or precipitation changes. And so we're definitely seeing major changes. Um, but in terms of what fraction is attributable to the climate change, uh, is much more difficult to, to tease out. How, how do you know, you just made an assertion not long ago that the wildfires that uh, we've been seeing in California are somehow connected to rising global temperatures. How do you know that? Um, so it's a combination of, you know, statistical analysis and basic physical principles. So as the earth gets warmer, California will get warmer. Um, and we know that the temperature or we know that for California in the summer, as it gets warmer, it also gets drier. And so fuel aridity uh, has increased. So essentially, you know, how much how dry and ready to burn uh, fuel is. And so the fact that that's increased means that we kind of know the sign in terms of climate change would make fires worse or potentially uh, larger, but it, that's not the only thing that's going on. You know, you have all sorts of uh, policy changes and, you know, things going on in terms of how uh, how we do, how we deal with controlled burns or various things like that. And so when it comes to impacts like fires, it's certainly not the case that climate change is the only thing affecting them. Um, and sometimes it's, it's down to the only thing we can say is, is basically we know the sign. Yeah. Okay, it looks like um, we've got a glitch here. Uh, so, okay, you're back. Okay, I didn't lose you at all. I don't no, good, good, good. Uh, you went, you froze on me for a minute, but they'll edit this out and we'll just continue. So I was about to ask you, uh, this is with respect to wildfires in California, which you said, we know the direction in which climate change should take warmer temperatures, meaning more fires, but attributing causality is the question that I want. And I assume, I want to ask, and I assume that there's year to year variability in the extent of wildfires in any case. So an uptick in a given year or even in three years might not give you that much statistical power in attributing that uptick to uh, rising temperatures, which are changing very slowly over time, albeit much faster than they had been in geologic time. So again, the question, and the same question could be asked about the intensity of storms, you know, hurricanes and typhoons and so forth, which I hear people giving um, reference to when they talk about the, the threat of climate change. And, I'm something of a skeptic about it just on the question of causality. I understand that, you know, climate change is not a good thing, but I don't, I just don't know whether it's implicated in year to year changes in uh, the intensity of uh, weather events or wildfires. Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a good question. Um, essentially, the one degree of warming that we've seen so far has not caused any huge signals to emerge from the noise of natural variability when it comes to a lot of these weather events. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to global average temperature, like I said before, uh, the signal to noise ratio is much larger. So we basically see a hockey stick. We see a situation where global average temperature is far outside the envelope of natural variability. But when you start getting down to weather events, like say, you know, hurricanes or landfalling hurricanes or most intense hurricanes, um, then you have this situation where there's decade to decade variability and year to year variability. And that variability so far is larger than any climate change signal. So you don't see any long term huge trends. Um, but the models that project uh, increases in, say, hurricane activity, they tell us that we shouldn't see in the trend yet. Uh, so they, they, they're not being like proved wrong by any means. They accurately simulate this year to year variability and this decade to decade variability. And they say the signal will emerge from the noise later in the century. Um, but it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be observable yet necessarily. Um, and so we have the situation where we believe um, based on physical principles that say hurricane, the most uh, intense hurricanes will become more frequent. Um, 
and but we don't see a trend in that yet and that's where we stand i mean i don't i don't know what else to say right like so uh our best estimate is that they will get more intense but we don't see a trend and so you just have to take that uh for what it's worth i guess okay can we uh, talk a little bit about what is to be done 